Hey everybody, um, hopefully the audio is a little better this time than last time. Audio was really low last time, so I'm going to try to make sure it's a little better this time. Just keep in mind, I'm definitely not a uh, YouTuber or content creator. I just do this for fun, uh, you know, messing around. Um, my next main video is going to be on a escalation in the South China Sea, but I did have a request to show an attack on the UK and specific to Birmingham. So what I did was I threw in a bunch of people around the UK, including um, Liverpool, Manchester, Birmingham, Oxford, London, Newcastle, Glasgow, Edinburgh, a couple people in Belfast as well, and a couple people up here in Aberdeen, and so like in Birmingham, I tried to get a representation of somebody in a multi-story reinforced concrete building on the top floor, somebody in a one-story frame building, <clears throat> excuse me, two-story brick building, somebody that's uh, in a vehicle, somebody in the open, so just a mix of people. And so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to represent this and what I consider a extreme example kind of a worst case scenario for the uk especially being a island nation that you know you don't want to compare it's maybe the size of a couple u.s states or even you know in alaska um you know don't quote me on that by the way i'm um but just make a point that compared to the united states where there's a large land area um uk doesn't have that i mean population wise where they're packed in um, just comparatively and so what it's going to be is I'm going to have the Russians expend one third of their arsenal and it's going to be a mix between counter force and counter value and I'm just going to go for a 50-50 mix um, so very, very basic plan, and this is just kind of to, um, model it, and then I can, you know, run through real quick, maybe one or two other scenarios. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play, or start the sim, and what you'll see is you'll start to see the Russians will start firing off their weapons, and then I'll speed it up and kind of show the after effects. Um, okay, so you see them start to go. Some of their mobile launchers, ICBM sites. You're going to see probably some of their subs start to launch too here. So they're going to start. So let me zoom in here. And I'm just going to speed this up so I can do this pretty quick. And so, you know, this will be the kind of the anticipation. And we're going to start getting hit here pretty rapidly. Like I said, it's going to be a mix between hitting military locations and hitting civilian center, population centers. I've seen a lot of comments regarding different scenarios, different factors. Um, I highly recommend anybody interested in the subject to read The Evolution of Nuclear Strategy. And I apologize, I'm probably saying it wrong again. I had a couple of people, including somebody... Yeah, you know, fucking Americans. Well, I'll be the first to admit I don't pronounce a lot of words correctly, and um, that's one that was pointed out, and it's most certainly correct. It's nuclear, nuclear. I still have kind of a hard time, um, but it's certainly not the only word I pronounce incorrectly. I'm gonna zoom this up because there's gonna be some airstrikes coming in too, just to make sure this is finished. So. Clearly a very, very bad day. I mean, anytime there's any sort of strategic level strikes like this, it's not going to be a good day for anybody. Um, I'm going to go ahead and calculate real quick, and then we can take a look at how some of the individuals are doing. Okay, so you can see here this a little less than one-third of the Russian arsenal with a... 
50-50 mix between counter force and counter value. It's calculating the casualties. And these are the immediate casualties. Keep in mind, this doesn't represent long-term casualties, but just shy of 17 million. And there are going to be some peripheral, probably mostly due to fallout, radiation sickness, various other things. You can see, even though I didn't model the UK or anybody else striking back in this scenario, you do see 35,000 for Russia. And I think that's largely due to some of their weapon designs and everything, releasing radiation over their own country and um, causing issues on their end. Here you see a representation of fallout distribution, um, fires, and then I can take this off. You'll see that represents density of casualties. Just take a quick look piece around uh, London. So you see, even though this guy's marked as injured, it does say that death from infections and hemorrhage is likely in two to four weeks. Um, this person was relatively safe, three-story brick building where they're at. Um, this person being in the open, um, again, not dead. Doesn't look like they're going to die, but possible infections without proper treatment and long-term effects when you're going to have supply chain shortage, shortages, medical supply shortages. He could potentially face death, even though it's not immediate. This gentleman here in Oxford is killed in a fire. Um, sorry, same person. Um, light injuries from glass and flying debris, but like I said, even semi um lighter injuries could be permanent so birmingham where I had the request um dead this says almost certain death within two to 14 days but it's almost likely they are killed in the fires right away severe radiation sickness not going to be smiling like that um this person was in a vehicle again almost certainly going to die it says here without intensive early treatment that's not going to be available not any kind of strike like this um, as you get a little further out from the strike so again closer to what i you would say minor injuries but again don't get a false sense of security because those minor injuries without pre proper medical treatment could be pretty bad this person in the open dead killed in fires manchester um I'm going to run through every individual, but you see that clearly um, pretty bad overall. Um, I'm going to run this one more time, and this is going to be a representation of the absolute worst case scenario. And that being a situation where Russia... If, say, they were to launch 100% of their weapons, and I'm still going to keep 50 50 counter force, counter value. Um, so I'm going to click on that, and we're going to see again a pretty. Uh, Pretty quickly, they're going to start launching. And then I'm going to zoom this one real fast. So, because I don't want this to be a longer video. Last one was 26 minutes. And so, I'm going to hit this super fast. Take a quick zoom out, make sure there's nothing else coming this way. There is. So, I imagine how terrible that'd be. You'd already taken massive strikes, and then there's more inbound. So, just gonna go ahead and calculate total strategy or <laughs> total casualties. Sorry, it's a little late, too. It's been a long work week. So, uh, 45 million, a little over 45 million casualties. 
Um, and then Ireland, of course, being nearby, we have 158,000. And not just nearby, but with Northern Ireland taking hits, you know, same island, going to have some significant um, casualties through fallout. I mean, you see there, it's what few gaps you had. Um, no longer there. So, significant fallout significant fires um, and again that's absolute worst case not a very likely scenario by any means um, you know almost certainly Russia would not just target the United Kingdom um, but it's important to look and understand because if we are looking at periods in the early 80s when the stockpiles were the highest um, Maybe that would have been a more realistic amount of warheads landing in the United Kingdom. The stockpiles were higher and tended to be higher yield warheads. They were a little bit less accurate. Um, and again, there's some questions, and I saw even comments about whether or not, you know, the maintenance on the weapons, are they all going to work? Are they all going to explode? Again, you don't know. Um, we don't know that, thankfully. Um, you know, obviously, stuff gets tested, missiles fail. Um, during testing, um, but again, it's a huge gamble to take. It's not one anybody would ever want to take and hope that you know their missiles aren't going to work simply because they've had issues with tank breakdowns and stuff. I mean, it's not something that you know anybody would want to bank on. That um, you know, we have the United States and some of our partners have ballistic missile defense. Ne it, it's not intended for anything other than defense against small rogue states with very limited arsenals. Um, our main defense is the uh, mid-course ground-based interceptors. And could be wrong, but I believe there's 44 interceptor missiles right now. And it's something to the effect of three for every incoming missile or warhead um, for interception to get a 98% intercept rate. And then we have THAAD for medium range ballistic missiles, not for intercontinental ballistic missiles. And then as part of the Aegis ballistic missile system on our warships, we do have the SM-3, which is intercepted an ICBM-like target once. Um, again, very, very limited. And so, you know, I hear comments from people that probably you know aren't as aware thinking well i'm sure we have something that will prevent a russian you know nuclear attack and no um we have uh very limited means it's very difficult um because it tends to be it's cheaper to just build more missiles than it is to build more missile defense um and it's considered destabilizing because mutually assured destruction anyways I want to keep this video short and it's probably dragging on because I'm rambling and I'm going to post like I said another one here in the near future and also some of my other you know wargaming stuff I do like command modern operations flashpoint campaigns and um, combat mission shock force so I'm going to have other stuff being posted here uh, but again I like playing around with this because it's very fascinating anyways thanks everybody have a great day